Today is May 25th. I'm Serena, and welcome to the Seven Streams Bible Reading Method. Can you believe that we are almost done with another month? I'm, I'm almost in disbelief. The time really is speeding by quickly as we go through the scriptures together. And I just am so excited every single day when it's time to read the Bible. I hope you are too. So we are in the exile stream today, which means it's kind of a short day, but usually it's pretty intense literature that we're going through. So we are going to finish the book of Hosea. That means reading chapters 13 and 14, and we are in the New International Version this week. Hosea chapter 13. When Ephraim spoke, people trembled. He was exalted in Israel, but he became guilty of Baal worship and died. Now they sin more and more. They make idols for themselves from their silver, cleverly fashioned images all of them the work of craftsmen. It is said of these people, they offer human sacrifices. They kiss calf idols. Therefore they will be like the morning mist, like the early dew that disappears, like chaff swirling from a threshing floor, like smoke escaping through a window. But I have been the Lord your God ever since you came out of Egypt. You shall acknowledge no God but me no savior except me. I cared for you in the wilderness, in the land of burning heat. When I fed them, they were satisfied. When they were satisfied, they became proud. Then they forgot me. So I will be like a lion to them, like a leopard. I will lurk by the path. Like a bear robbed of her cubs, I will attack them and rip them open. Like a lion, I will devour them. A wild animal will tear them apart. You are destroyed, Israel, because you are against me, against your helper. Where is your king that he may save you? Where are your rulers in all your towns, of whom you said, Give me a king and princes? So in my anger I gave you a king, and in my wrath I took him away. The guilt of Ephraim is stored up. His sins are kept on record. Pains as of a woman in childbirth come to him, but he is a child without wisdom. When the time arrives, he doesn't have the sense to come out of the womb. I will deliver this people from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. Where, O death, are your plagues? Where, O grave, is your destruction? I will have no compassion, even though he thrives among his brothers. An east wind from the Lord will come, blowing in from the desert. His spring will fail and his well dry up. His storehouse will be plundered of all its treasures. The people of Samaria must bear their guilt because they have rebelled against their God. They will fall by the sword. Their little ones will be dashed to the ground their pregnant women ripped open. Return, Israel, to the Lord your God. Your sins have been your downfall. Take words with you and return to the Lord. Say to him, Forgive all our sins and receive us graciously, that we may offer the fruit of our lips. Assyria cannot save us. We will not mount war horses. We will never again say, Our gods, to what our own hands have made. For in you the fatherless find compassion. I will heal their waywardness and love them freely. For my anger has turned away from them. I will be like the dew to Israel. He will blossom like a lily. Like a cedar of Lebanon, he will send down his roots. His young shoots will grow. His splendor will be like an olive tree. His fragrance like a cedar of Lebanon. People will dwell again in his shade. They will flourish like the grain. They will blossom like the vine. Israel's fame will be like the wine of Lebanon. Ephraim, what more have I to do with idols? I will answer him and care for him. I am like a flourishing juniper. Your fruitfulness comes from me. Who is wise? Let them realize these things. Who is discerning? 
let them understand. The ways of the Lord are right. The righteous walk in them, but the rebellious stumble in them. Dear Lord, we hear your heart today in this, Hosea's finale. You so long to bless and heal and be with and shower good upon your own people. May we be a people who hears, obeys, and lets you touch our lives. Amen. We finished the words of Hosea today. He began his ministry around 760 BC and prophesied to the Northern Kingdom until its final end in 722 BC. He lived in the North and by God's command, lived in and among the Israelites, a nation turned completely pagan. Hosea knew the pain that this paganism was causing God. The adultery hit home even for him as his wife was committed to adultery as a lifestyle. He had seen seven kings come and go. All were wretched. In chapter 13, the people of the north had been so regal until rebelling. Ephraim was a noteworthy place. Once upon a time, it was noteworthy for a good reason. Now, it is noteworthy for a bad reason. The kingdom splitting was the occasion for calf worship to be instituted. This was about 160 years before Hosea showed up. Jeroboam wanted all loyalty to be up north and away from the temple. This was the late 900s BC. About two generations later, King Ahab added Baal worship to the calf worship. The calf worship started the spiritual bleeding, whereas with the Baal worship, an artery had been nicked. The story of Ahab doing this is told in 1 Kings 16, 30-33. Ahab had been gone for just over a century now, and Israel was about to bleed out and to be a lifeless place. The death of a nation is at hand. And this is what Hosea is speaking to beginning the reading today. They will be pounced as if by a wild animal. The wells will go dry. Even the babies will draw no compassion from the hordes that will pour in to kill everything they see. In chapter 14, it has been a terrible 200 years for Israel. The curtain is about to be drawn. Not much good at all if any has come out of a land that has dedicated itself to being rebellious to the Lord, to the south, to the temple, and all else that God stands for. The Assyrians are coming. Israel will be decimated. This is where rebellion ends up 100% of the time when God is being rebelled against. Does that make God mean? Not at all. Listen to the beauty of what God wants to do with His people. Were His people to repent, all would be forgiven. And he still beckons them to repent. Their gracious God would heal them and their wayward hearts. They would be loved and no love, true love. Oh boy, were they to listen to God? The wonders and rejuvenation, the communication with God, the fruitfulness. Good heavens, what can happen at the hands of a loving God? God wants them to walk again, walk with him. And now this is an invitation that stands for all of us. SevenStreamsMethod.com is the home port for this podcast. Thank you so much for joining me today as we continue to sail down these streams. Tomorrow we will transition to the Christ stream. Know that nothing can separate you from the love of God. Until tomorrow, I'm Serena, sailing with you down the seven streams.